So, we need to talk about Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery. Scratch that, a Benoit Block mystery. Because in both of the films, Daniel Craig's eclectic detective character steals the show. Glass Onion in particular is definitely the best movie that I've seen this year. It's witty, the plot is compelling, and above all, it really shines a light on how billionaires are made. Not necessarily through the trials that they go through, but through the myths that surround them every day and which truly make them. The movie does a tremendous job at showing just how inept billionaires are and how their success truly comes on the back of other people. It also shows the power of narratives and how the promise of money and success lets the billionaire gets away with anything. More importantly, however, Glass Onion shows what it looks like when the facade comes down for the billionaire and what it can mean for them when the narratives change and expose them for who they are, which means that Glass Onion truly shows how it is myths that truly make the billionaire. In the movie, Edward Norton's Miles Braun is the eccentric billionaire character. He's the one who's credited with coming up with the idea of Alpha Industries, a sort of tech powerhouse company that specializes in almost everything. He's also the one who funds the idea of Clear, a sustainable hydrogen-based energy source that is supposed to be the miraculous solution to climate change. This addition to the film is a genius one by Johnson. By showing Braun as someone who supposedly has the well-being of all people in mind by attempting to solve the issue of climate change, Johnson effectively does two things. First, he sets the stage for the magical mythos that surrounds Braun as a sort of benevolent genius who uses his resources for good. Second, he also broadcasts the technocratic desire for magical one-step solutions to climate change. This is an important thing to know because it truly shows the way technocrats think about the crisis. Instead of thinking of it as a social phenomenon along with a technological one, the technocrat effectively considers it a crisis of technology, a sort of issue that needs one solution in particular allowing for human lives to be virtually unchanged. Until that magical solution can come about, however, no other solution can be considered Hence the reason for foolproof technologies like carbon capture or nuclear fusion, which are either unsafe or decades away. It's not merely the technology that Alpha brings to the world that gives Miles the image of a genius billionaire and an overall force of good. It's also the cast of characters that surround him and who praise his genius who contribute to the narratives surrounding him also. Those characters are all joined by one thing, owing a lot of their present lives to Miles. There's Duke Cody, a MRA YouTuber that owes his following to Braun. There's Birdie J, a waning model and pop star who only runs a successful sweatpant line because of Miles' investment. There's Claire DeBella, the current governor of Connecticut in the film, who hitches the success of her political career and Senate run on Miles' campaign contributions and clear technology. There's Lionel Toussaint, the head scientist of Alpha Industries who can't espouse the dangers of clear to Miles because of how Miles saved him from being a high school science teacher. There's also the characters of Peg and Whiskey. Peg is Birdie's assistant who has a love and hate relationship with her and who is desperate for Birdie to continue on being successful for her own sake. Whiskey is Dukes' girlfriend but who only stays with him to increase her notoriety and social media following. She also sleeps with Miles to be able to help Duke out with Alpha News and also so that she can stay within the good graces of Miles. The four characters of Duke, Birdie, Claire, and Lionel are the most notable ones, however, and that's because they knew Miles before his success with Alpha Industries. It's also those four characters who let Miles think of himself as a genius, themselves believing in the hype just a little bit so that they can continue to benefit from Miles to a large extent. As Lionel says about Miles in the beginning of the film, Genius always looks like insanity at first. Though. These characters sort of represent people from actual life who imagine they can be as successful as the quintessential billionaire. The sort of people who defend Elon Musk to a large extent even though there is no way for them to reach the level of wealth that he has. The people who ignore basic class analysis allowing themselves to continue to drown in the narratives of the benevolent billionaire. It's important to remember however that those narratives are just that narratives. Capitalists don't care about anything other than the accumulation of capital and the furthering of their mythos. They also tend to be terrible people who will backstab anyone if it will benefit them. 
that callousness is shown in the movie to a large extent. After it's found out that Bertie's sweatpan company uses sweatshop labor from Bangladesh, Miles persuades Bertie to take sole responsibility for that, even though he knows that it will ruin Bertie's career. Additionally, Miles continues to have sex with Dukes' girlfriend even after purporting to be his friend. And he repeatedly rejects Dukes' request to host Alpha News, supposedly because he doesn't want the backlash. That isn't to say that Duke and Bertie and Claire and Lionel are not horrible people either, because they quite literally are horrible people. Bertie is a callous and rude and insensitive individual who's incredibly selfish. She's also kind of a bigot and hides her bigotry behind the notion of telling the truth. Duke is a raging misogynist who thinks of his girlfriend as nothing more than an object. Claire is a vapid politician that doesn't believe in anything. Lionel is a head scientist who has the power to tell Miles that his hydrogen-based fuel idea is dangerous, but who doesn't because of the fear of his own facade falling down. And to top it all off, all four of those characters outright lie in court so that Miles can continue to be thought of as the originator of Alpha Industries, when in reality it was their friend Andy who was. That lie is what pushes Andy out of the company, causing her to lose everything that she worked for. That lie also causes Andy to lose her life, because to maintain that lie, Miles has no choice but to kill her. All those characters are disgusting, who care more about the myths surrounding Miles than actual human lives. They're selfish, and it's also that they can be a part of a myth that doesn't exist. The myth of the exceptional billionaire. I spoke at length about that myth, but haven't truly spoken about why it's a myth. In fact, there's still a subset of people who believe that billionaires amass huge amounts of wealth on their own. The bootstrap myth is a strong one in the American mythos, but it's not real in the slightest. For instance, Elon Musk, who has many similarities to Miles Braun and his companies, receives billions of dollars worth of subsidies from the federal government through grants and tax cuts while speaking against those subsidies in the first place. Jeff Bezos received $300,000 from his parents to start Amazon, while Kylie Jenner had the privilege of having famous parents and sisters before she made her first billion. In fact, the iPhone is just a combination of components that were originally developed because of government spending. For instance, government spending helped the internet get its start, and that was the case for other technologies like touchscreen displays and GPS technologies. There are literally only a few products and services that didn't have any government involvement in their creation. That's kind of the point of living in a society. Nevertheless, Glass Onion does a tremendous job of bringing that fact to the forefront, and in a totally humorous way. Throughout the film, we learn that Miles is nothing more than someone who steals his ideas, and that his only purpose is to pay smart people to make his ideas come to life. In fact, Miles is nowhere near a genius himself. He did not develop clear or come up with the idea of it. Rather, he got the idea from a couple of shady scientists and only funded it. His dock is too small for a boat to safely dock there at high tide. He uses the wrong words to sound smarter than he actually is. He doesn't know basic facts. He got someone else to write the murder mystery for his party. And... He was stupid enough to keep an incriminating envelope near him rather than burning it or shredding it. He even kept an override button, the only purpose of which was to expose the Mona Lisa to danger. And what I like most about this is that Benoit Blanc came to the realization of Miles being an idiot only after he was able to tear down the facade of his genius. He says so as much in the film. As Blanc says, Like everyone in the world. I assumed Miles Braun was a complicated genius, but why? Miles Braun is an idiot. That simple fact allows Blanc to solve the murder mystery at the heart of the movie, the mystery of who killed Andy. Because Blanc thought that Miles would be an idiot to murder Andy, he overlooked him as a prime suspect throughout much of the film. It was only when he understood that Miles was nothing more than an idiot that he was able to realize the fact that he was the one who killed her. And what I love most about that realization was that Blanc didn't come upon it himself. Rather, he was able to get the help of Andy's sister, Helen. I've already mentioned how Benoit Blanc is the undisputed star in both Glass Onion and Knives Out. 
Daniel Craig just has so much fun in the role and he brings so much into it. With that being said, the protagonists of both those films are undoubtedly the main women characters of it. For Knives Out, it was Martha and for Glass Onion, it's Helen. And quite purposely, Ryan Johnson makes Martha a nurse and Helen a teacher. By making the two protagonists essentially working class women, Johnson does a tremendous job at contrasting the vapid selfishness of the rich people in the film with the kindness of the two main characters of the films. For Glass Onion in particular, Johnson does something even more masterful for the character of Helen. He gives her the absolute agency to help Blanc solve the mystery of her sister's murder. She also has the agency to directly call out the people who harmed her sister to a great degree. That was a tremendous choice for the film because it provides extra insight into both the characters of Helen and Blanc. What this choice shows us about Helen is that she's a brave person who's also a great judge of character. She's also compassionate towards people who deserve it, providing words of encouragement to Whiskey for instance. She's simply a good person. For the character of Blanc, this choice affirms his kindness and willingness to help his clients in need, a great break from detective characters in general. It also helps the audience know that he doesn't consider himself as a savior who needs to save people. He says as much to Helen in fact stating that he's not Batman and that his jurisdiction ends with the solving of the case. Blanc does have a strong sense of justice however while knowing his place in the larger case and that shows near the ending of the film when he gives Helen the piece of clear so that she can go ape shit on Miles Braun. The ending of Glass Onion is a super cathartic one in my opinion. Helen absolutely destroying Miles Bronze's home and also his empire is a delight to see. It's even more of a delight after experiencing some of the stupid moments by billionaires this year. Whether it was the very stupid space race or the absolutely dumb move of buying a social media website for way more than it was worth and then destroying it and a car company in the process. It was also cathartic because we rarely see rich frosters get their comeuppance in real life. I guess that's why Glass Onion is a work of fiction, but it's also a great one. At the very least, it does a tremendous job at slightly pulling back the facade of the billionaire and the myths that surround them. Nobody makes a billion dollars out of their own accord. It's always on the back of workers. One person is not extremely important to a company's success. Rather, it's the workers who cause a company to become successful in the first place. Billionaires are not genius individuals who make it all on their own. Rather, they tend to be privileged people already having the means to pursue their ideas. The myths that make billionaires are persistent ones. But if we can look past the claims of genius and pierce through the glass onion, then we might find out that billionaires can be simply dumb. <laughs>